Vikings drafted Randall Jean Moss with the 21st overall pick back in 1998, little did they know what that pick would mean to their franchise and the game of football. Randy Moss became one of the greatest receivers of all time and one of the most dominant players ever. His legendary combination of size, speed, and ability to jump out of the building has reverberated throughout later generations with nobody truly capable of replicating his infamous style of play. And from day one, there was no doubt how good he would be. Moss broke the single-season rookie record with 17 touchdowns and immediately established himself as an absolute force of nature, immortalizing himself in time. But as time goes on, it's funny how history tends to repeat itself. Fast forward 22 years, and with the 22nd overall pick in 2020, the Vikings drafted Justin Jefferson, who in his rookie season also broke records. Jefferson tore up the league with 1,400 receiving yards, smashing the record once held by Moss, and also became the fourth rookie ever to have 1,000 yards in his first 12 games. That includes Odell, Anquan Bolden, and that Moss guy again. Jefferson even became one of the most efficient receivers in the entire league with 2.6 yards per route run, which was second best, and 4.3 yards per route run against man coverage, which was first. He didn't try to replicate Moss's style or anybody else's, but used his own unique style, which translated to immediate success. He has incredible quickness and an ability to use multiple moves and path variations within a single route. He understands angles and how to attack leverage better than any rookie I've ever seen, He's almost like a knuckleball both off the line and down the field, where you really have no idea where he's going until he's five yards behind you, and he sets up defenders better than any rookie receiver should have the right to. As we start to dive into how he set the record and did something we've never seen before, we first need to understand his fit in the Vikings offense and look at the nuts and bolts to discover why he was so successful. The Viking system with Gary Kubiak at the helm is cut from the same cloth as the 49ers, the Rams, the Titans, all those wide zone play action teams. The wide zone run stretches the defense out horizontally, and when the linebackers cheat up to stop it, that's when the Vikings hit them with play action. The system is based on making the run and play action concepts look identical to open up space in the secondary, but the skill of Jefferson and his teammate Adam Thielen allowed the Vikings to take it even another step further, which we'll see in a bit. Typically, offenses will run what's known as the Yankee concept, which consists of a vertical, an intermediate route, and a flat route to create a three-level stretch on defenses who usually have only two defenders in the area. When the linebackers move up, the secondary has to worry about which of these receivers is running the vertical and which is running the crosser. And while Jefferson does at times run the vertical route, crossing routes are really the name of his game. Watch how he uses a rocker step, which is kind of like a Euro step for all the hoopers out there, and Jefferson is so smooth and natural with it, he actually gains speed when using it. It's really, really difficult to defend these crossers in one high safety coverages since this corner has to match it across the field while playing outside leverage. So defenses will sometimes have the safety cut the crosser and the corner replace the post, or they'll have the backside corner sit for the crosser and the other two go deep, but it's really challenging to do any of that when both receivers are so good at making things look identical. Jefferson uses the rocker step to look like he's the one going deep, which backs off the corner in safety, then he cuts across. And the success with this Yankee concept really sets up everything else the Vikings and Jefferson wanted to do. Just that concept alone would be hard enough for defenses to stop, but that's where the Vikings were just getting started. Jefferson is so good at these crossing routes, he's able to create immediate separation which opens up an infinite number of possibilities and variations off this same look. Since he can win early in the route, he's able to beat the corner and then go in, out, short or deep, and make defenders look silly. As his production started to spike, teams started paying more attention to him and less attention to Thielen, but even with more double teams, it didn't matter. The Vikings are running what looks like that play-action Yankee concept, but have Jefferson reversing back out and Thielen sitting down over the middle. Vernon Hargraves immediately jumps outside and over the top to protect the sideline and try to funnel Jefferson inside to the safety, so he's really got to sell the crosser to create room to make it to the corner. If Jefferson isn't able to create space with speed off the line and isn't able to sell the route, he'd run right into Hargraves waiting for him, so he uses his entire body and eyes to get Hargraves to undercut his route. And by the way, most receivers aren't able to sell this well with their hips and body since they have to get to their landmark outside, so they begin to cheat. But Jefferson is able to get back around to the corner for a big play. 
In fact, he tied Calvin Ridley and Travis Kelsey for the most receptions of 20 plus yards, and a lot of those came off of play action crossers or variations off of the play action crossers, which called on Jefferson winning at all phases of the route. He's able to beat Anthony Brown with speed, because once again, if Brown is outside of him and Jefferson doesn't beat him off the line or in the route, he'll have to just run straight through Brown's leverage, which is really hard. But he actually proved he can do that too. He showed an ability to use physicality and still beat those defenders outside even when he didn't win with speed, and answered many of the questions about his play strength coming out of LSU. There were even more questions about the depth of his release package off the line, and whether or not he was solely just a slot receiver. But 65% of his production came when he was lined up outside, and his release package? Absolutely deadly. Jefferson has multiple releases within each overarching family of his releases. When he uses his slide release like he does here, he can then activate about 15 different moves while mixing up the timing and pacing of each of them to adapt to however the corner is playing him. He sees Malcolm Butler lined up with heavy inside leverage and uses this long slide release to try and fool him. Usually, receivers use this release to open the corner's hips outside, then take a big hard step and cut back in on a slant or some kind of inbreaker. But instead of jamming that outside foot into the ground, he quickly puts his inside foot down to change up the timing and then accelerates past Butler. His speed out of his releases or those rocker steps from before is one of the things that makes him special, and he stacks Butler while maintaining space outside to give himself room to adjust to the ball and high points it over the top. It's one thing as a rookie to be able to set up defenders on a certain play during the down, but if you can do it over a span of multiple plays, that's just another thing that makes Jefferson different. On three consecutive plays, he pretty much tortured the Jags cornerback Luke Barku. When his foot goes back at the beginning of his release, it's a good sign the slide release is coming, but he's able to do almost anything off of it. After his initial move, he again hesitates a step to challenge Barku's outside leverage, then starts to jump back inside like we saw him fake against Butler, and when a corner speed turns this quickly, you know you've got him. After the run, he's in a similar split outside the numbers and wants to keep Barku off balance and guessing. He again uses a similar release and quickly jumps inside, but now watch what he does. He starts with what looks like the slide release, but quickly comes to balance in what's called a split release. So he's basically hybridized two different moves into one, and he's just starting his route. This throws off Barku's timing, who just saw the slower move, and also gives Jefferson a two-way go in or out. The move is so sudden, Barku thinks he's going vertical, and again, he speed turns. Now Barku has no idea what the hell is coming. If you put any corner on an island with Jefferson, he's deadly. If you do it for three plays in a row, that's your funeral. He again starts with his foot back, like he's going to use his slide release, but when he feels Barku trying to read what the heck is going on and sitting heavy inside, Jefferson expedites his release and just burns right past him. He proved that he can win outside and on contested catches, and that he can rack up yards pretty much anywhere all over the field. His production didn't just come on crossers or fade routes, but was almost perfectly distributed in the underneath, intermediate, and deep areas of the field. So it's not like defenses can just key on the one spot he was doing all his damage. And while the majority of his production came when he was lined up outside, his 19.2 yards per reception from the slot led the league by a mile, nobody else had more than 16.8. What's crazy is he can actually improve on his rookie season, since there were a surprising amount of variables stacked against him. Being on Zoom meetings instead of OTAs certainly didn't help, so that time this year with Kirk Cousins will be incredibly valuable. He only had 125 targets, which was 18th in the league, and when looking at his splits throughout this season, he had 41 targets in his first eight games, and then 81 at his next eight. And if he can cut into some of Adam Thielen's red zone work and start to see more targets in general, he can improve on his record-breaking season. Statistically, his rookie year is mentioned in the same breath as the Odell, Anquan Bolden, Randy Moss group, and that last guy did it on the very same team in a slightly different fashion. Moss was, and still is, one of the best players of all time, and in the purple and gold he ruthlessly demolished defenses in every possible way. His ability and style, no matter how disgusting, has informed the preceding generations about what it means to be dominant, but nobody else has really been able to copy that style. Justin Jefferson has proved that his style is what works best for him. His own unique way of whooping guys off the line or in the down has translated into record-breaking success. He just had arguably the greatest rookie wide receiver season we've ever seen. And now, while the past watches him make history, his sights are set 
on winning in the future.